I was just obsessed with space and with NASA. I remember the moment that I first drove through the gates at Johnson Space Center in January of 2001, pinching myself that I was there. I still pinch myself every time I drive through that gate, every time I walk through the doors of Mission Control and I'm sitting at the flight director console looking around realizing like, I'm here. One of my earliest childhood memories is when I was four and a half years old. It's January 28, 1986, which if folks remember, that was when we tragically lost STS-51L, the Challenger mission. So I remember watching that footage over and over again of the launch, and then 73 seconds later, we lost the shuttle. And my mom said after that, I was laser focused on being an astronaut. In sixth grade, we had a career day, dresses, you know, who you want to be when you grow up. And so I went to the library and I found one book on Judith Resnick, who was one of the astronauts on Challenger, who's actually from Ohio. I think my astronaut suit was just a pair of jeans and like a denim shirt, because it was an all blue suit. And I made a little name tag that said NASA. Yeah, I was just obsessed with, with space and with NASA and I was lucky enough to go to space camp a couple of times so I went sixth grade down to Kennedy Space Center in Florida which was awesome it was just such a fun experience because you got to meet kids from all around the world really who are also complete geeks and were in love with with math and science and space and then I was lucky enough to go back to space camp again my senior year in high school I kind of quickly realized once I got a bit older that maybe being an astronaut uh, wasn't the right thing for me because I was scared of heights, I didn't like to ride roller coasters, I was afraid of pretty much everything, but I knew that I still wanted to work for NASA. So that kind of persisted all through throughout high school. So when I was looking at colleges, I knew I wanted to do aerospace. I started looking at who had high presence down at Johnson Space Center and I found Purdue, right? The cradle of astronauts. I had a poster of all the Purdue astronauts, which back then and now has since grown, adding a few more astronauts on top of that. Purdue kind of called to me. Once I got to Purdue, I knew that the co-op program was something they encouraged every student to do. The first few groups that I was put into, I wasn't really crazy about. I liked the co-op experience, I liked the environment down at Johnson Space Center, but I didn't like the work that I was doing. So when I came back to school, I was a little disheartened in terms of, is aerospace really the right fit for me? Maybe is Johnson the right fit for me? But then I was lucky enough, as I was researching my final two tours, I found the Extravehicular Activities Office. And so I was able to spend eight months in that group really learning the work that they were doing, and it was just, an incredible mixture of highly technical work and then you needed to have that hands-on experience where you were able to learn these things yourself but then teach. So we taught the astronauts how to use their spacesuit, how to build the space station and then ultimately working in mission control as they were executing these spacewalks. So I did my last co-op tour. It was January through August of 2003 which was actually a really interesting time to be interning in the a spacewalking group because that was tragically when we lost Spatial at Columbia. It was really interesting to see how the, the NASA community kind of pulled together. We mourned, but then we knew we had to keep exploring. So we had to figure out how do we fix the space shuttle. If we were to have damage like what took down Columbia again, how do we fix it? So I ended that co-op tour in August of 2003, went back to school for two semesters, graduated in May of 2004, got married in June of 2004, and then started full-time in July of 2004. So I had received the offer in that EVA training and flight control group uh, when I was back at Purdue. And so it was interesting to see when I got back almost a year later, how much we had progressed in terms of developing that repair capability. And then I was lucky enough to help work the, the return to flight space shuttle mission, which happened the year after. I remember the moment that I first drove through the gates at Johnson Space Center in January of 2001 when I was starting my first internship. I was in my grandpa's old car that he had given me that we drove all the way down from Ohio, driving through the gates of Johnson, NASA Johnson Space Center with the NASA meatballs, driving through the gate, showing them my badge. To this day, I still pinch myself every time I drive through that gate, every time I walk through the doors of Mission Control and I'm sitting at the flight director console looking around realizing like, I'm here, I work here, it's been 20 years now and I still love what I do. My first application, attempt at an application to be flight director was in 2014. So I had just become the EVA group lead at the time. Um, I didn't even get an interview. I think they knew that I was young enough in my career. I'd been there for 10 years, which seems like a lot of time, but I really had only been focused in the one area, didn't have as much experience, wasn't heartbroken over that. I had really thought hard about why I wanted to be a flight director, and it was just because I love the work. I love the work in mission control, and I love the idea of really being the conductor of the orchestra inside mission control, which is a great way to, uh, to describe the flight director position. 
So I applied in 2015. Uh, they had two rounds of interviews. The, I made it to the second round. They interviewed eight, and they selected five. So I was one of the three that wasn't selected. I was pretty upset. The rejection for the flight director application in 2015 was kind of the first time I said, oh, I want to do this, and I was told, no, you can't do this. Despite being upset and frustrated by it, I really took the feedback they gave me to heart in terms of, you kind of need to broaden your horizons a bit. You need to, like I said, you've, d you've done the same job this whole time. Look for different opportunities. So it was around that time that the opportunity to move out to the NBL opened up. I didn't want to go too far from home, so going out to the NBL made sense and that it was the same folks I was used to, to working with. When the next round of flight director applications opened up in 2018, I wasn't sure if I was going to apply because I really liked what I was doing at the, at the NBL and I thought maybe I'll wait till the next round. I was lucky enough, I was invited um, by Drew Foistel, Boilermaker, to watch him launch from Russia on a, on a Soyuz rocket. So I was sitting there in that room watching the Russian flight controllers operate, watching the spacecraft dock and I realized, oh my gosh, I want to do this again. I'm crazy, what am, what am I doing saying I'm not going to apply? Of course I'm going to apply. And it was one of those, the app, you know, I got home from Russia, say on a Friday and the application was due on Monday. And I told my husband, oh my gosh, I have to apply. I have to get my resume ready. I'm like, honey, I think I'm going to do this. And he said, I know you're going to do this. I got an email, kind of let's say at 4 p.m., that said, be in the boss's boss's office at 6.30 the next morning. So it was just kind of suspicious. Brian Kelly, who was the, the uh, chief at the time, kind of each shook our hands, gave us an FOD coin, like a challenge coin, and said, congratulations, welcome to the ranks of flight director. So then we took a, a group photo, which I still cherish, as the first photo of the six of us together as a class with the biggest smiles on our faces. <laughs> so the best advice I would give to a young Allison is find what you love to do, find what you're passionate about, and be excellent at it. It's, it's a common misconception where you think, I wanna be an astronaut or I wanna be a flight director, and you look at biographies of folks who have done it before and you think, I must check every single one of these boxes. I must follow this path. And that's not the case. That is not the one size fits all solution to achieve your dream. And so I think the most important thing is, like I said, find your passion and just be awesome. And then doors will open up for you. Opportunities will come your way.